Hello, this is Jeremy Comel, and welcome to Lipid Mash Tutorial Part 3. In this tutorial, we'll be discussing how to run Lipid Mash once you have your input files. The first thing you have to do is organize a folder with all your input files. Files can be organized in multiple ways. For, for the most simple way, generate a folder and include your data dependent files, both positive and negative, as well as one feature table for negative polarity and one feature table for positive polarity. It's important to note that you can only have one feature table per folder for each polarity, but you can have as many data dependent or MSMS files for positive and negative polarity as desired. Note also that the data dependent files should have DD in the name somewhere and should end in neg or pause depending on their polarity. Feature tables should also end in neg or pause depending on the polarity they represent. Now, another way that these folders could be organized is you'd have one parent folder, but maybe you have multiple experiments you want to run lipid match on simultaneously. So in that folder, you can have your different experiments, let's say heart and plasma. And so inside, it would be organized the same way as that one single folder. In the heart, let's look here. We can show that you could only look at one polarity, for example, if you only contain negative polarity data. In addition, you can see here for that one polarity that we have multiple MSMS files, which is accepted by Lipid Match. Now, to run Lipid Match, we go into our Lipid Match folder. It's important to note here that originally your Lipid Match folder comes as a zip file. You'll have to unzip the Lipid Match folder and make sure that you grab the folder and put it outside of the zipped file for it to work. Once you do this, you can double click the Lipid Match script 2016 in this case. Lipid Match should end in a dot R. Now it opens up in R Studio. If it doesn't originally, you can go to Open with and then choose R Studio. And if R Studio doesn't appear, you can choose another app and navigate to find R Studio. Once you've opened it up in RStudio, and RStudio can be downloaded, there's a link accessible within the Lipid Match manual. Then, to run it, press Ctrl-A to select it all, and click Run. Now, pop-up boxes will navigate you through the process. It's important to note that sometimes the pop-up boxes appear behind all your files. So, if you're not seeing a pop-up box, minimize and look for it. Once the pop-up box appears, it will ask if you have the latest version of R. It will ask you to download if you don't. So I'm going to press OK. I do not have the latest version of R. It's recommended that you have the latest version of R using Lip and Match. In this case, I'm going to say I don't want the latest version to save time. Now, to input your directory of MSMS and feature tables, which was the folder that we discussed earlier, we have to navigate to it. So this time it's on our desktop. And let's use the Lipid Match single folder, although we could click the Lipid Match multiple folder. In which case, if we were running multiple files, we'd click the parent directory that had all the other folders in it. So this one. In this case, we just click the folder. Now the input directory of libraries, which is contained within the Lipid Match folder, is the next folder that we need to import. Now there's a retention time window parameter. This is the retention time window in which you'll find MSMS scans under your features for identification. And it's based on the width of your peaks in chromatographic peaks, chromatographic peaks. So here I'm going to go default for plus or minus 1.15 minutes. And then there's the parts per million window, which is for matching fragmentation to the in silico fragment masses. So here I use plus or minus 5 ppm, which is based on a 35,000 resolution using an Orbitrap mass spectrometer. Now for the 
accuracy window for precursor ion searching. Uh, it's in Dalton's, so it's plus or minus 0 0.005 is the default. Although, as in any of these parameters, you could enter in any value you want. I'm going to go for default. Now you have the MSMS isolation window you used. So I don't recommend using anything above 1.2 as it will make the confidence of your identifications less. So we used a one isolation window, so we'll click one. Now there's the threshold intensity for your fragmentation scans. I use a threshold intensity of a 1000 so I'll go for the default, although you can change this intensity based on your instrument and the signal to noise. So now, it has to have a little bit of information on your feature tables. This information allows your feature tables to come in many formats. So if we look at our lipid match, and we look at one of the feature tables, you can see the format. It's important to note that these input files were generated in Tutorial 2 and that the feature tables are .csv, the msms files are .ms2. Now you can see here is the feature table and here's the format. And so it's going to ask you some things. First it's going to ask organized so we can see both at once. It's going to ask you what is the feature table, the column in the feature table that contains the row ID. These row IDs have to be numeric. If your feature processing software doesn't generate numeric row IDs, you can just go one through the total number of features and add a column with that. So here's the row ID column. It's column one. So I'm going to put 1. Now, the mass to charge column they're requesting from the feature table. That's column 2. Now they're asking for the retention time column, which is column 3. And finally, they want to know what row does your numeric data start? So in this case, row 1, 2, 3 is the start of the numeric data. It's important to note, for example, here we have the sample groups, the sample names, and other information. So you have multiple headers. Once you have numeric data in your feature table, you have to make sure that it's only numeric data. There shouldn't be any characters after your numeric data starts. And so that's three. So we'll say our starts at row three. Now after we've completed before we complete this last uh, pop-up box, make sure to close the CSV file. You want to make sure that all files which Lip and Match are going to use and access are closed at this point. The final parameter is the minimum number of scans required for fragments to be confirmed. So for example, do you need to see three scans across a peak with all the MSMS information, or only one? In the case of an Orbitrap, one scan is usually enough. So you press OK. Pop-up boxes disappear. To know that your code is running, you can open up our studio, unminimize it, and you'll see the stop sign. Don't click it. The stop sign will appear and disappear as the code goes on. Uh, and once it disappears and doesn't come back, that means the code is finished. It will also print, which I'll show you later, which step has been completed. Another way to know how far Lipid Match has run is to go into your Lipid Match folder. As you can see here, an output folder has been generated. And that folder is your data dependent for neg, neg by class, pause, pies by class. It goes in this order in which it performs identification. So we start at negative mode. We can see in the additional files that it has run these classes so far. 
once all of these folders are completely populated, then it will generate the final files, which I'll discuss in Lipid Match Tutorial Part 4. Thank you, and looking forward to seeing you in Lipid Match Tutorial Part 4.